Hi, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to the Challenge Run Mark II. So, I uh, got a little bit of an earlier start today. Hopefully we can easily fit two missions in without me, you know, rushing out the door at the end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we have an attack contract in three days. So let's look at what we've got going on. Our Hunchback, as I said last episode... Darius, come on. Come on, Darius. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright, so as I said last time, the Hunchback is out of commission for the rest of this, essentially. There's there's no way I'm going to be able to contribute six days. Then again... If, it, if I manage to get through the next contract... This will be three days till the next contract, and then the next contract after that, it'll be ready. So no, actually, our Hunchback isn't as bad off as I thought it was. Um, I don't think anything got crit on it. I'm pretty sure it was just like a lower arm actuator that got crit, and everything else is fine. And actuators, you, it's zero days, zero cost to repair. Oh, zero days, zero cost to repair, but I'm not going to be able to go into the mech lab on day six. So actually, let's jump over there and set the um, hunchback stop work. That way we can preemptively repair the lower arm. Boom. So now we can armor up. And it will take six days. However, six days will be fine. Man, the NPCs are really chatty today. Um, but yeah. So we should be able to get back to our full standard loadout in six days. So I think we were full on the front. And then... A little bit light on the back. Wait, now it's seven days? Ah, okay. So it's seven days because we repaired the lower arm. I see. Well, that still means we might be able to bring it back later in the conflict. Or we could drop down back armor a little bit until we get to six. If we lose center, we lose the mech. So, it's better for us to have lower armor on the side. Yeah. <clears throat> we would just have to be really careful to not let anyone get behind us. Unless we want to leave a little bit of the armor off the legs, just to get that little bit of extra on the side. So that's still 95 damage that we'd have to take to the left torso to lose it. Yeah, I think protecting... Protecting the side torsos is more important than protecting the legs, I think. Because we have 160 on the left leg now. So now if we get hit from behind, we have a hun uh, 108 on the left torso and 120 on the right torso. Whereas the legs... I mean... Yeah, if one of the legs gets taken off, we are crippled as far as movement, so we won't be able to punch anymore, but we'll still be able to fire the AC-20. If we lose, if we lose the side torso that has the AC-20 and the Angel ECM, then we're going to be in real trouble. I think this is the way we do it. That's six days, so it should, as long as we push it to the front, it should be ready on the second mission. And our Wolfhound and Cicada will definitely be done. 
I would definitely rather the Cicada be ready than our Phoenix Hawk, I think. Uh, our scout was repaired in time, but lost a heat sink and we could not drop it. So, let's go ahead and put another double heat sink back in. One day, beautiful. Right. And yeah, there we go. So everything except for the Phoenix Hawk, Phoenix, <clears throat> everything except for the Phoenix Hawk and the Hunchback will be ready whenever it pops. So here we go, launch mission. Pull up a chair. Full salvage because we're against Clanners. It's a two and a half skull assassinate. Interesting. So this time we can bring a little bit more. Paradox is setting this one out. We're definitely bringing the Bushwhacker with our commander on it. We are definitely bringing the Oscout with Dida in part so that we have the laser AMS. Um, we do not have the AMS from the Phoenix Hawk. Let's see, what else do I want to bring? I like the Wolfhound. I really liked, uh, it was very effective last mission. And again, if we have to punch it out, then we won't lose as good of head components as if we have to punch out this Wolfhound or the Firestarter, and primarily just the Air 12 Sheath Beacon. Very good piece of equipment. So we're at one and a half. That puts us at two, which is too much. Okay, we're still at one and a half with the Firestarter. Alright, that's what we're going to drop then. And Jester's in the fire starter. although it doesn't really matter for the fire starter because the affinity points give us flamer and machine gun accuracy, and evasion ignore, and heat. So that's a thing. <clears throat> in any case, uh, yeah, so Jester, he's dropped 20 missions, 20 more, and he'll get plus one all piloting skills. So... It's worth continuing to drop him. Alright. I think that's good. Dida on the Oscout has finally hit 20, which means he has plus one probe and plus 15% vision and sensors. Lamia is two missions shy of 40, which will give her plus one accuracy and minus one recoil. Which doesn't actually matter. <laughs> I mean, the plus one accuracy is good, but the, the minus one recoil doesn't matter because we have military and we have the flak fire control system. So the medium expulses already have zero recoil. The snub nose already has zero recoil. But yeah, it'll give us plus one accuracy, so that's good. How far is Garrison? Garrison is at 41. So we have the plus one sensors and probe detection on the cicada. Lucky has not dropped that much. 29 but still has the plus one defense and melee defense. And honestly, the 40 doesn't matter. Our Bushwhacker does not go fast enough to get seven evasion. So, let's go. All right, two and a half skull, clan assassinate. Command interface initiated. In an urban biome, oh dear. So we have like no indirect fire at all. Now we are short range, so it could be Let's go to a bar after the it, it could be to our place. advantage. Because we do run a lot of short range. So it could be to our advantage that we're in an urban environment. But it also, if they have a lot of like artillery and indirect fire, we might be in trouble. And the supporting lance is immediately beside the primary target. Not ideal. Uh, all right. Here we go. Just dropping in, firing line. If we see any enemies, if we see any enemies, we'll hopefully not... Wait. What? Oh, okay, that's part of the support. I was going to say, if the, if the target's a viper, then what? Yeah, two and a half skull. I expect something scarier than a viper to be our primary target. Sure, no problem. I'm going to give them a turn so I have something to shoot at without spawn protection. But that is going to... Ooh, ah. 
I needed to set the Angel ECMs to passive. So who has the Angels? Angel ECM passive. Uh, Chameleon LPS. Air 24. Regular ECM. Okay, so just the Cicada. But yeah, we probably wouldn't have taken that damage if we had had our full ECM intact and running. I definitely like the idea of aid evasion. The idea of giving more people a chance to shoot at us, not so much, but aid evasion. That's a that's a nice thing. That's an exterminator. That's our primary target. I see. No shooting, just well, running. Got let's it. get the uh, cicada zoom in so that we hopefully don't take a ton of damage. Also, he's stealth. Awesome. Primary target damage to me. All right, let's see if we can take him down in round one. That'd be pretty nice. That is a major, major threat. Okay. Four out of five hit from the Four. AMS. Beautiful. Yeah, as long as they're shooting like LRM fives and things like that at us, we're in good shape. Uh, tucking right beside the corner of this building so that hopefully nobody else can shoot at us. And on my way, double time. <sighs> okay. I could take the shot. 50s, 40s, or 44s and 51s, like, that's a pretty good shot, but instead I could EWS ping, because he's got 6 evasion because he jumped. So the, the medium pulse lasers have a high chance of hitting, however, the large X pulse on the Oscout. scout the PPC and the, uh, the lasers on the Wolfhound and the SRMs and laser on the Bushwhacker don't have as much evasion ignore as the Firestarter. And since he's stealth, the EWS ping will make sure that we get good sensors on him. We'll reduce the amount that his stealth, you know, impacts our sensors. Yeah, there's that indirect fire I was worried about. But it's alright. We're fine. I'm on the clock. What do you want? So now I can push, and yeah, that's exactly what Let's I was talking about. Bad decisions at high speed. So we're gonna go acid, absolutely. Then again. We're not going to be able to kill him this turn. So maybe heat would actually be better so he can't shoot and jump. Then again, the acid will also knock him unsteady a lot more easily than the uh, than the Inferno missiles would. So yeah, we're going to do that. Alright, he's open. He's unsteady. Well, who needed to sell I sh oh wait, I probably don't have Vigilance. I was going to say, I should have gone Vigilance with the Bushwhacker to finish him off next round, but... No, I don't, I don't probably, by. yeah. I do not have Vigilance available at all. I mean, I'm totally fine with the Oscout being shot at. Nighthawk. ER large, large, medium pulse. Not too terrible. Affirmative. But that's a 96% chance to do 80 damage pinpoint. Boom. Okay, I was not expecting a kill. I'm not gonna lie. Enemy down. I was not expecting a kill. That's awesome. Okay. Major threat is off the battlefield. What was that? Uh, that's an interesting crab. 
eye. That is a very interesting crab. So we are going to get six. Yeah, we're gonna kill Nighthawk. Six evasion on our lovely wolfhound. And we're gonna pound into a Nighthawk. Firing all weapons. Bandit does not have any indirect fire. Beautiful. Oh yeah, we're gonna be able to make short work of this lance. Wyvern over there in the distance. Okay, 10 damage on a stray shot against the Oz Scout. But uh, the Wolfhound did... Hits, the Wolfhound did get pelted by the ER large. Okay, indirect fire from the Wyvern. Not super worried about it. So these guys don't have any kind of artillery that ignores our evasion. Aye, aye. Which means we should be able to fairly easily put ourselves into a good position. Is there a place I can get unobstructed backstrike? No. Only obstructed. <sighs> Actually, he's already... He's already in pretty bad shape on his left side, no, right side. And this is the right side we'll be able to engage from. Beautiful. Affirmative. We are going to deal a little bit less damage because I pulled off a ways. But. Confirmed. Yeah. He's not going to get another turn. Yeah, because he's going to die. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, what is our hit chance on the crab? 69% for 80 damage pinpoint. I'll take that. Oscout scout moving in, also getting C3 online. 69% missed. Unfortunate. Didn't even hit the building. Alright, and this Viper is nasty. Five ER mediums and an SRM6 clan. Side note, SRM6 clan. I want it. Where is it? It is on the left arm, so I want to kill him shooting him from the right. Alright, you know what? I'm actually going to let him move around again. I'm going to take another All shot right at the there. crab. And hopefully, we can take out the right side and save the SRM-6 clan. Also, side note, that's a crab. Which I think has four large pulse lasers. I'm on the clock. What do you want? It's a... that's a thing. Okay, I can move for obstructed line of sight to Mr. Crab. However, that's not great. Still obstructed, still obstructed, everything's obstructed. So I think what I'm actually going to do... I'm gonna move. Alright, let's get down to it. I'm going to take down this building. <sighs> I need 80 damage. So... I'll use some dead fire. I won't even shoot all of it. Keep the SRM4 silent, as well as... One of the SRM sixes that has lower hit chance. That should be plenty. Well, let's hope they have insurance. Yep. Crab goes down, is now unsteady. Boy, I takes call my leg winter. damage. Looks like the market just opened up. Fifty-one thirty-five. That's all that's left on his legs. So now, Cicada does what Cicada does best. Double time. Let's go. Flanks, takes leg. And with him on the ground, we'll easily be able to seal the deal. 
Okay, not enough went to the legs. Unfortunate. Yeah, he's got 15 left on his right leg. Alright. I would absolutely take parts of a crab. Crabs are amazing medium mix. They have the narrow low profile quirk for plus one defense. And usually they have some pretty good hard points. Yeah, Although this one may not have that good of hard points since he seems to only have... Oh wait, he's got one large pulse laser exostar in each arm. A royal heat sink kit. This thing's a royal. Cockpit SLDF standards, SLDF co uh, fire control, Royal Heat Sink Kit double. The Royal Heat Sink Kit, I believe, is actually a built in component. Can I get five and shoot him? I cannot get five and shoot the crab in the side. Alright, I'll take four then. Copy that. I could. I could shoot at the Wyvern. Okay, so this is turn 18 that the Firestar is taking. We then have the Cicada, and the Oz Scout, and the Wolfhound. Yeah, we have our entire team before the Crab goes, so I'm actually just going to focus the Wyvern. With my super accurate people to knock him unsteady. Good to go. Just like that. And then Garrisoned is going to start working on this Viper. I want to hit him from the right side. Here is front, here is right. I don't want to hit him in the back. Back might go to left side. So I'll get seven evasion, uh, break line of sight with everyone else, and shoot the Viper in the side I want to destroy him from. Awaiting order. I know I'm kind of splitting my targets. I mean, the crab is very dangerous. Uh, I want to save the wolfhound, actually, until after I get him on the ground. Orders. So we're going to use the Oscout. No, the Oscout does 80 damage pinpoint. That would actually destroy a lot. Okay. Oscout is also going to come back with the cicada to try to steal with the viper a little bit. Taking the shot. And miss. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. I'm on the clock. Alright. Lucky. You are gonna hit the crab in the side. Let's make some bad decisions. Primarily with Inferno. Um is it shift? No. Alt. No? Oh, right, right, right. It's because it's a SRM 6, and those are Valiants, and that's a 4. So we have to do it the old-fashioned way. That's fine. That is completely fine. Alright. Wait a second. Engine destroyed? Are there five points of five parts of a royal SLDF crab on the board? Standing by. Color me excited. Alright. We don't need the wolfhound to take the other leg of the crab anymore. So firing all weapons. We're gonna scramble the sensors of the Viper, so that those clanny or mediums don't hit. The Vivern has ER large, smalls, and some streak twos. Again, we have AMS, so he's jumping again? I'm being flanked. Really? All he's gonna need is a tickle, and he's gonna fall down. Wyvern also jumping. And missing everything. Beautiful. Love to see it.
And the bandit is hovering away. Okay. I'm on the clock. What do you want? I think we're gonna hit the wyvern with heat. Because I'm fairly sure we're gonna kill the viper this turn. But I don't think we'll be able to kill both. So we're gonna get him a little toasty and apparently get a head hit as well. Nice. Then we are going to come around the side of the viper and continue pelting him from the right. Copy that. There's a leg. Target stick. That's a knockdown. And I think the Oz Scout. No. No, it needs more than 80 damage on the leg, so we're going to try to finish it off with the Wolfhound. With getting as much evasion as we can. Actually, if we sprint, do we still have a perfect hit chance? Yes. Can we sprint for five? No. Okay. Sprint for four. Perfect hit chance. Wolfhound is a little toasty. Copy that. Both legs destroyed. Nice. Ready for orders. All right. Wyvern is just being pelted from the front continuously. Actually, has less armor left on the back than on the front. That settles that. That settles that very, very easily. I mean, we literally have him surrounded, so... We will definitely be able to destroy him from behind. Just gotta be careful to not shoot at our own people. So, angle the shots so that we're not shooting past anyone. That large X pulse just has not hit this battle. And it's very unfortunate. LRM crit because he was hot loading it. Yeah. Bandit just scooting around over there. Oh yeah, we we had an easy mission this time. And once again, just got perfect hit chances. I'm <laughs> I'm willing to shoot towards my bushwhacker because again we had almost perfect hit chances. So the odds of us accidentally hitting our bushwhacker are very low. Um, yeah, I'll take a cooldown turn next round and hit the uh, hit the the hover tank, the bandit with uh, EWS sweep. I'm on the clock. What do you want? See, this is a situation. Actually, he only has three evasion. I think we ignore all of his evasion. I was going to say this is a great uh, situation for Artemis ammo because hover tanks usually have like six plus evasion. So Inferno does 11, Deadfire does 15, but at half the hit chance. Tandem is tandem. It's a vehicle. Let's go. Easy mission is easy. Beautiful. Mission successful. Alright, cool 830,000. Essentially no damage. We got we got peppered a little bit. We're definitely going to be able to get the Hunchback and the rest of our team fully repaired by the next drop. Two, three, four, and five. We have a full crab with SLDF tech in it. Nice. Now then, what else? Not gonna lie, that Clan SRM-6 is very appealing. But, that's also an AR-12 sheath beacon. Clan Case 2, Clan Indo, another Clan XL inch. I actually, I value the AR-12 sheath beacon <laughs> higher than the XL Clan. Because every Clan mech has an engine XL Clan, but AR-12 sheath beacons are more rare, and also really good. Like, really good. 
So, cool. I mean, I still hope we get the SRM-6 randomly. Got some exterminator parts. Those are gonna need to go. Uh, got a Nighthawk part, cool. Wyvern parts, okay. Medium pulse laser, triple stack of clan medium pulse lasers, clan AR medium, comm suite, good stuff. Clan Indo, clan Pharaoh, clan Pharaoh, clan cooling. Omni lowers we don't need, single heat sink cooling we don't need, and a half bin of Artemis SRM ammo. Okay. Cool. Engine core 180, we already have one. On a 60 tonner, that's a 3 hex move. Could actually be useful for light mechs and medium mechs and heavy mechs. Light heavy mechs. So I'll, I'll hold on to it. Alright. Man, RG is so weird. <laughs> Two and a half skull mission, we take 6,000 sievels of damage. One and a half skull mission, we get wrecked. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, Hunchback back to the front. Actually, I believe everything will be done. Two days, two days, third day. Yeah, everything will be done by the next engagement. Cool. Real quick, Welcome while we're at it, let's ever. take a peek. Oh, stop spinning. Also, I have no idea why this number 534 is in the corner. I don't think I've ever seen that before. SLDF Crab? That neck you asked for is cleared for fighting. Like, SLDF Crab, can't complain. Oh, it is super busted. Oh, it is super busted. We got a jump jet and a large pulse laser Exostar. And the Exostar has plus one accuracy on top of the pulse laser accuracy. But it fires five bursts of ten instead of three bursts of fifteen, I think, regular large pulse lasers? Or sixteen? I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, for 261,000, we have a royal crab to build. Alright. Obviously, not going to take priority. Right. I'll get it in the schedule. Obviously, it's going to be at the bottom, but that's still pretty cool. Launch mission. Let's go. Uh, battle? I think that's the symbol for battle. We'll see. Yeah, battle, lowlands, two and a half skull. You know, I'm very happy with this team. Hunchback's a little bit light. Phoenix Hawk is crit. Lower arm. Okay. Alright. I like this team. Let's drop this team again. I'm having so much fun with this. I think next I'm going to look for a three and a half or four skull planet. That's also having a, ba uh, having a war like this. Because this is fun. Dropping three mi uh, you know, missions every three days. Trying to trying to manage having the mechs ready and the pilots ready and uh, yeah, seeing seeing what randomized mission you get fed. All right, so they have the high ground. There's nothing I can do about that. Also, it's a nighttime mission. I don't remember how many of our mechs do or do not have night vision, so this might be tricky. Uh, we're gonna drop our bushwhacker there. Our cicada hopefully out of sight. Uh, the wolfhound also hopefully out of sight. The Oz Scout and the Fire Starter right there. All right. Okay. Septicemia. What? <laughs> um. That's a UAC twenty. Luckily, his uh, Clan ER PPC seventy-five damage pinpoint. Actually, wait. Is that orange or red? Uh-oh, I think it's orange. So he can still shoot it, it's just less accurate. Oh boy! Order. Uh, Jester, I need you to get evasion and draw his fire. I'm picking up a new Ooh. sensor trace. Looks like enemy reinforcements. 
<laughs> Ice Ferret. ER Large, Small Pulse, SRM-10. Fire Moth. Medium Pulse Lasers, A-Pod, Machine Guns. Hunchback 2C. A pair of Ultra AC-10s. Clint 2C. Question mark, question mark, although it's heavily damaged for some reason. A Grendel. A Shadow Cat. Luckily his energies do appear to be destroyed. Pretty sure those are red. Sentinel. Not too worried about that. Epona could be dangerous depending on what it's carrying. And a Bandit. Okay. Luckily, the stuff on the high ground is not nearly as scary as the stuff on the low ground. Locking in all weapons. I have to shoot at the Septicemia while it has spawn protection. On the clock. What do you I want? need to kill it before it acts. That Ultra Auto Cannon 20 cannot fire. High speed. Cannot fire. Ah, uh, I'll take the lower hit chance. I need to shred his armor, and I definitely would love to have the bonus damage from the acid. Alright, 18% increased damage. Dida. Please hit. Please. Copy that. Okay. I don't think we're gonna take him down. We still have the cicada and the wolfhound, but that's all we have. Three clan pulse lasers and the wolfhound's X pulses, PPC, and laser. <clears throat> On the bright side, they are taking the all scouters or target. Cool. Aye, aye. Okay, I can either get six and line up for a stray shot, or I can get five in cover. Obviously, gonna take the five in cover. Way. Double time. All right, we'll found. Firing a full salvo. Unfortunate. Structure is exposed, but the PPC missed. I was really hoping for the sensor scramble. Clint 2C, some kind of swarm missile, or not missile, sw some kind of swarm ballistic. Eight, shoot him in the face. On my way, double time. I'm literally standing in a line intentionally so that there's less of a chance of the UAC-20 stray shotting. Affirmative. Nope. Alright, all we can do is hold on to our butts and hope that we don't die. That's the opponent, isn't it? Goss Rifle? That's dangerous. Especially since he's on the high ground so he has bonus to, uh, hit chance. I mean, the Shadow Cat is dangerous, but nothing compared to what's downstairs. Like, these guys on the low ground are super scary. Side note, all scout's almost unsteady. If he gets knocked unsteady... Okay, the peep did hit, so that's 75 damage pinpoint. But the UAC-20 missed completely. Beautiful. And he is hot. But even if he's overheating, he can just not fire the PPC and unload with the UAC-20. So he is still the primary target. Are we unsteady now? No. Okay, still holding on to our evasion on the Oz Scout. That's good, because now it's the Hunchback 2C's turn. And everything missed. Yeah, not getting knocked unsteady was so important there. Because, yeah. He would have effectively had a plus 8 to hit us. 
if we had lost our evasion. Awaiting orders. All right, Lamia. You are a perfect candidate to go in and finish the Septicemia. Good luck. Giving him everything I've got. Nope, just an arm. Target's taking a critical hit. Standing by. Garrisoned. Actually, Garrison, I want you to run interference on the high ground. Opona has a UAC 10. Let's move. So is it the bandit that has the Gauss rifle then, or is it the Sentinel? The Sentinel has the Gauss rifle. But the opponent also is already open from this side and has a lot less armor. Great clustering. Structure is exposed. So now, if we could just get line of sight with the fire starter, which we cannot. That's unfortunate. Alright, fire starter, I'm going to use you to finish off the Septicemia then. On my way. If you would, please. Please. He does not have an XL engine. Also, we destroyed his Clan Nova EWS. I would have loved to have gotten that. It's fine, though. Taking him down, getting the UAC-20 off the board is very important. And then after that, the next target is the Clint, who is already almost open center. Yeah, it's fine that we get knocked unsteady now because it's just about the Oscout's turn. Damage minimal. Um... But yeah, the Clint also needs to go down with its dual eight. Oh no, no, it's the Hunchback that has the dual UAC tens. So, clock. What do you want? actually, he's really hot. And ultra auto cannons, unlike just standard auto cannons, do generate a lot of heat. But he is out of range of our Inferno missiles. That's so unfortunate. Okay. I think we go Let's for the Septicemia, since the Bushwhacker is short range. Try to finish him off. Deadfire is not an option. Tandem we should absolutely save for tanks. So, acid it is. He's panicked, but he's not down. Ow! Okay, it's fine. Oscout has nothing in the arm. Reporting. Critical hit. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, definitely want to put our right side towards enemies. Uh, definitely going Vigilance. Because they really don't like him. And we're going to sprint for four. We are clustering up a little bit for stray shots. But hopefully everything will work out. That's a leg. That's not center torso. Fall damage. Maybe? Okay, he's down. I don't know how. Probably pilot injury. Maybe. Okay. Cicada is holding. That Shadow Cat is very accurate, though. Hit too many of those missiles, considering the Cicada has 7 evasion. Yeah, these guys are actually hitting our cicada. Light damage. Again, seven evasion, and they're hitting. That's insane. Like, they must have such good targeting gear. Ice ferret. Doing a little bit of damage to our fire starter, but not too bad. Pona with its UAC-10, missing completely, beautiful. Okay. Clint. Yeah, that AoE ballistic that he has is dangerous because it ignores our evasion. So dangerous. Bandit Hovercraft. Also getting 22 damage in. They're chipping away at the Cicada. Damage, I mean, again, 7 evasion. 
they're still hitting. That is scary. Alright, Fire Moth. Can I only hit you from that angle? Yeah. This is a charge, yep. Okay, so Dida is not going to get his braced. Because I'd have to turn my back to everyone. Actually, I think I'm going to hold with the Brace and Four Evasion from going Vigilance last round. Good to go. Garrison, you need to get into the side of this Epona, and you cannot. Okay, in that case, I want you to get in the back of the Sentinel with the Gauss Rifle. You're just going to move to drop stability damage. Ooh, left torso is almost open. And I don't have vigilance. Ah, uh, okay. Six evasion will have to do. Not getting knocked unsteady is very important. Let's see. Hopefully we can take the Sentinel down before he's able to hit anyone with his Gauss Rifle. Alright, we are not able to shoot everything at the Hunchback, but we can hit the Clint. Let's make some bad decisions so I think we will. We are exposing our back to a Gauss Rifle, I know. Very, very dangerous. But again, he has some kind of, like, splash AoE ballistic that's ignoring our evasion completely. So the Clint is also a danger. The Clint's a danger. The Hunchback's a danger. The Sentinel's a danger. The Fire Moth's a danger. Everything's a danger. You're a danger. And you're a danger. Everything's on fire. But it's all okay. Five evasion. Let's move. In the Clint's face. Take him down, please. Beautiful. Thank you. One left target. All right. Next up. Here comes the Sentinel. Not shooting our bushwhacker in the back and missing everything. Love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Commander. Lamia in the Wolfhound. We want to hit the Hunchback on the right side because that's... Ooh, actually, I say that, but we can get into his back. Copy that. And we get cover in the process. Beautiful. Firing a full salvo. Uh-huh. There's half a Hunchy down. Hit. Yeah, I was going to focus fire him from the right because we could get all of our mechs in there. But I think the Wolfhound is going to be able to take him down solo. So we can actually divert our attention away from him with everyone else. They're still trying to kill the Oscout. I don't know why, but I'm so happy that he's some kind of magnet. Yeah. Go ahead, keep hitting my Oscout. I'm happy to see it. Reporting. Heavy damage. Happy to see it. Now then, um, he is getting very slim in armor though, so I think it's about time we get him out of the line of fire. Wait. Okay, it's the same hex. If I move, it's two evasion. If I sprint, it's three evasion. Interesting. You know what, 6% hit chance, I'll take the one extra Roger evasion. That. I'm also not dropping my stability damage, but... We just killed the only mech that had line of sight to him, so I'm happy. Yeah, that that is a large improved heavy laser. Or a large expulse, I'm sorry. Oof. Alright. Yep, that's a UAC-10. Ooh, actually, 
He shut down. So now we can just focus center torso from behind with the Wolfhound. Which means there will be a clan UAC-10 and ammo for it on the ground afterwards. I would love a clan UAC-10. I prefer UAC-5s just because the range and damage and stability and everything is just like Reporting. the Goldilocks zone. But UAC-10s do more damage. So if you can put it on a fast enough mech that can get in close, it can be very effective. Very, very effective. Actually, I... Do UAC-10s have minimum range? Aye, aye. That's something I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, I actually kind of want to get 4 evasion here because my hit chance is not going to get any worse. I cannot get 4 evasion and cover, but I can get 4 evasion. So, hunchback. Center torso. Everything. Copy that. Go. Alright, hunchback down. It's another UAC-10 off the board. Everything is slowly but surely coming together. Uh, cannot get into the Sentinel's back. Can get cover. And can either shoot the Shadow Cat with the LRM-15s or the Bandit with Tandem. Actually, wait. There we go. Only 34%, but that's fine. We only need a couple of them to hit. 25 damage. Not enough. Okay. So we're going to need to shoot it again next round with the tandem. But the sentinel is exposing his back. Yeah. Eight evasion. Shoot the sentinel in the back. The cicada's open sight is away from most of the enemies. I am exposing my back to the shadow cat with the LRM-30. But... Copy that. I think it's fine. Here comes the Shadow Cat moving away from the back of our cicada and doing nothing. Ready for Beautiful. <sighs> the Oz Scout. <sighs> 62 armor and structure combined left on the right torso. 80 armor and structure on the right arm. And 109 on the center torso. And there's nothing in the right torso or the right arm. So I am actually going to take a shot unobstructed against the Shadow Cat's rear. If I hit side torso, it's gone. Firing at enemy six. But I'm not going to hit anything. Fair enough. It was only a 25% chance. Commander. I'm largely bringing him out so that he draws fire away from things like the fire starter. Although, the fire starter is just getting hit in the shield side, so that's completely fine. Uh, I do want to drop stability, so I'm going to vigilance with the fire starter. And why are those hit chances so awful in the shadow cat? All right, let's hit the ice for it then. Copy that. I mean, it's hard to pass up on almost 70% on all your weapons. The opponent is running. We're gonna take a cooldown turn with the Wolfhound, shoot the opponent in the side that's already open, and call it a day. And then we'll be able to rejoin the fight with the Wolfhound after the, afterwards. So I'm thinking probably... That's some weird positioning. System's holding. That's some very weird positioning. He shot through his Sentinel buddy. 
Okay, Bandit Hovercraft has pulled away, so we can't shoot him with our Bushwhacker. But that's fine. We're in good shape. I mean, we are taking structure damage on several of our mechs, but hey, I'm getting my ass none of the locations that are Waiting open are particularly valuable. I mean, three plus cover. On the move, full speed. Shoot Sentinel in back. I copy. Goss ammo destroyed, but. Record a critical hit. Hey, I'm overheating. Turn 21. He gets one last shot with his Goss rifle before we can kill him. They're flanking. But he doesn't shoot it. Standing by. All right, you're lost, buddy. Three evasion. Move order confirmed. Drop stability. Epona. All we need is one hit to the side, so we're going to drop our snub nose PPC. And as long as one of the three lasers hits, it's a kill. Taking the shot. Two of them hit, actually. Oh no, three of them hit. All three of them hit on That's the same kill. location. That's nice. No kill like overkill. Okay. That. That was bad, actually. Okay, so the Oz Scout, the heavy Pharaoh got destroyed. <laughs> There's not much of an Oz Scout left. And now we lost the head components as well. That's okay. If we're gonna lose one, I would much rather it be the Oz Scout. It is by far, and plus we did not lose the large X-Pulse laser. That's worth noting. The large X-Pulse was in center torso and did not get crit. Yeah, there was 11 structure left on the center torso. Oof. I'm actually very, very glad that he punched out. So we lost the fire control breaching, the compact life support quick cell, SLDF cockpit, and range sensors. That's it. By him punching out, we saved the bulky endo steel, the large X pulse, the double heat sink kit, the laser AMS, the advanced zoom, the UAV, all the stuff that actually matters. Side torso, we lost three double heat sinks, which we have plenty of, and an ECM. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to rebuild it, don't get me wrong. It's not great that we lost all that, but... I mean... Our fire starter's overheating. But if we punch the sentinel in the back... Actually, I'd rather punch the ice ferret. And secure the kill. Oh, never mind. The only angle we can get on the uh, Sentinel's back with our Bushwhacker is if we decide to put our back to everyone else. So instead, sprint behind the Ice Ferret and Let's kill him. Make some bad decisions at high speed. Um, acid, 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 acid. Should melt through all that armor very quickly. Yep. Beautiful. I'm legally obligated to inform you on paper kill. Okay. The Shadow Cat is still dangerous with its LRM 30. And there's some more really accurate LRMs on the Grendel as well. The Bandit Hovercraft, we just need to hit it one more time with tandem and it dies. Instead of burning through hundreds of armor. And if we sprint to the same location, we can position like so, which allows us to shoot him in the back without putting our back to the enemies. Alright. Now it's up to the fire starter. Awaiting orders. Or actually it could be up to the wolfhound. What, what initiative do we have? The fire starter needs a cooldown turn, and he does act before the sentinel. 
Yes, Commander. So no, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my trust in Jester's ability to punch. And I'm going to take the shot I can get against the Grendel. On the move. All right. Oh, yeah. At least his sensors are scrambled. Now then. Punch into his back, firing the three pulse lasers that we can. Okay. That's a kill. Good job, Jester. Good job. That's a cross rifle off the board. Now, our fire starter does only have two evasion, which is dangerous, but... I was gonna say I'm pretty sure the Wolfhound has their attention, but it turns out they're just not gonna do anything. You will see no complaints out of me. I'd rather get a shot on the one that hasn't acted. There we go. It's obstructed, but that is a shot. Alright, so we've got 12 shots of acid. And then... Yeah, Inferno's basically what we have left. One attitude I should have put the lasers line. between... Ah, it's whatever. It's fine. The SRM is Everything order. is fine. Because now we can swing up with the Cicada. Hopefully draw their fire to the 7 evasion mech. Here it comes. And give them a little bit more grinding. Upper leg destroyed, foot destroyed, hip destroyed. Critical hit, Commander. I was very close to a legging. Very close to a legging. And indeed, he's firing indirectly at our cicada. So if he's using Artemis ammo, he actually took an even bigger penalty to hit. So the accuracy delta was insane if he fired Artemis over, you know, indirectly. Yes, Commander. Alright. Yeah, so the Grendel has two clan LRM-15s as well as a medium pulse laser and the ER small. Whereas the Shadowcat just has the LRMs. Uh, Grendel is almost... Almost destroyed on the... Our side torso on the left is almost open, but I can only get into his front. I am playing a little bit risky with the Cicada here, but I'm going to Vigilance to hopefully keep it extra safe, because we do only have 81 armor and structure combined on the left torso. And we are running an XL engine. I'm on the clock. What do you want? But... Okay. Let's make some bad decisions at high speed. If it's the shot we got, it's the shot we got. Go ahead and put the lasers first again, now that I'm out of acid. And... Firing. I'm mostly just trying to panic him. So that his accuracy is reduced. Aye, aye. can only get obstructed line of sight to the Grendel. But can also get obstructed line of sight to the rear of the Shadowhawk. Or Shadowcat. Targeting for an alpha strike. Structure exposed, unsettled. Okay, so that's a that's a penalty of one to hit. Okay. Wolfhound taking it like a champ. Standing by. Firestarter has no targets to speak of. So it's a cooldown turn. Also can't get into range to EWS ping, so that's fine. We needed a full cooldown turn on him. Although the Grendel now ran towards him, so I probably actually could have gotten a shot if I had been more patient. But it's fine. It's fine. And this bandit's still scooting around. Commander. All 
All right. That. Wolfhound repositioning, shooting the Shadow Cat in the back once more. Beautiful hit chance. Standing by. Garrisoned, cannot get behind the Shadow Cat. So we'll shoot the Grindle in the back, actually. If he if he panics out, that's a Clan XL engine on the board. I copy. Or we just leg him on accident. That works too. I'll take a legging. And he's bleeding out, but I don't care. I want him dead. I want him dead right now. some bad decisions at high speed. Okay. Got some crits. Got a lot of heat on him. I'm showing minor damage. Oh. Stray shot. Whoops. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good at all. The Shadow Cat was able to hit the Wolfhound in the leg and take the leg off. Receiving you. Oh, boy. Okay. We... Roger. We need to hurry up and go to the Wolfhound's help, or to the Wolfhound's assistance. Here it comes. I thought I had it in the bag, but man, LRM 15 clan is no joke. Target neutralized. LRM 15 clans are no joke at all. And here comes the bandit. What are you gonna do, mate? Oh. Ow. You okay? You good? You good? I think you're good. Okay. I think Lamy is okay. All right. Let's see. Left arm, shield arm is open. Okay. Left torso, shield torso. Still has 85 structure. Right arm has the snub. It's up down to 53. Right torso, which has the peel and stick armor and the bright bloom laser, is 73. Center torso is fine. Leg is at 92. So actually, the yeah, Wolfhound's a lot better off than I thought it was. I was very concerned. No shooting. So we Just should be able to kill the Shadow Cat. Should be able to. Fire it. All right. But it is his turn. Please ignore the wolfhound. Thank you. All right. That hit was really bad. Firestarter lost his shield arm. That's fine. Can I get please into his back? No, I cannot. I cannot get into the open back of the shadow cat. Okay. Well. That's really unfortunate. And yeah, the bandit hovercraft has so much armor left. Copy that. On the bright side, we will be able to stand the wolfhound up before the bandit hovercraft goes again. Okay, Shadow Cat is stressed. All right. Let's make some bad decisions at high I think speed. we're golden. Tandem on the bandit hovercraft. Good. All right. I'm legally <sighs> obligated. Awaiting orders. Stand up. Beautiful. Thank you for not punching out Lamia. Or I guess Let's go. I guess I should wait to say that until after. Ooh, and you can get into the Shadow Cat's back. Affirmative. Revenge kill. Reduce mobility. My mech is limping. Okay, not a revenge kill, but okay, yes, a revenge kill. Beautiful. Mission successful. Nine hundred sixty-eight thousand. Beautiful. Cicada. That was dangerous. They were very, very accurate with all their Artis Ar Artemis missiles. Very dangerous, hitting the seven evasion cicada. Um, yeah, so our wolfhound's gonna be down until we can replace the leg. The engine got crit, 
but we only lost shield arm and leg. Or only shield arm got open. The Oz Scout, on the other hand, we did lose the head, uh, but again, I actually prefer that. I prefer him punching out over us completely losing the mech, so thank you, Dida. Thank you. And then the Firestarter also got his shield arm blown off and got a couple crits. So yeah. They want the Septicemia, which I'm not even going to take anyway because I'm pretty sure it's a heavy. And they're going to put SRM4 streaks and clan masks in exchange. I will absolutely take that. I would love to randomly get some clan masks. Clint 2C. Grindel. Hunchback 2C, there was only one part. There's a full Sentinel. But, I don't care because it's Inner Spear Tech. And the Shadow Cat's an Omni. I'd rather take Clan Tech, like these beautiful Clan LRM-15s. They, they are, just like the Clan UAC-5, they are best in class for hardpoint, tonnage, damage, stability, heat, everything, like just... It's, it's the great Goldilocks zone of LRMs, is the Clan LRM-15. Uh, medium heavy laser, eh, I don't like the minus one penalty to hit. Clan small pulse, uh, sure, but I'm not gonna pick it. Clan UAC-10, zero minimum range, does 120 damage as two shots, rather than 125 damage as five shots that the AC-20 we currently run on the Hunchback does. Has a longer maximum range. Only weighs 10 tons. I'm going to take that in UAC-10 ammo. I mean, I could take Clan XL engines. Could take Clan Mask. But I think... Oh yeah, 4 stack. That, that is a stack of four UAC-10 ammo bins. Takes two bins to run the UAC-10 for ten rounds. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay, we got the Hunchback 2C part. Actually love to see it. I would love to build a uh, Hunchback 2C. Uh, we got a Grendel part. Cool. We got a Shadowcat part. Sure, whatever. Uh, we got the Clan Small Pulse and a Clan ER Medium. We got... We now have... A pair of clan UAC-10s with the ammo necessary to run them. Hello. Clan armor just gives case. I'm just going to sell it for 9,000. Engine core 215, we don't have one. We got, we got a clan XL randomly. As well as a clan heatsink kit, clan advanced target computer, standard fusion engine can go... Streak SRM ammo, sure. That, I'm so happy. Alright, so we have 183,000 for repairs. Yeah, a lot of that's going to be the Oz Scout. How many days on the Oz Scout? Only five. Huh. In any case, uh, Wolfhound, Cicada, and Bushwhacker are the highest priorities. Firestarter will also be done within three days. And I think I'd actually rather get the crab up and running before I repair the Oz Scout, because the Oz Scout does need a lot of stuff now. And there's also the chance that I stop work, pull out the Large X Pulse, put the Large X Pulse on the Wolfhound, the Laser Wolfhound, because I think the... Laser Wolfhound is running a large laser and a large improved heavy. I would love to replace the large laser with the large X Pulse somehow. But we'll think about that later. For now, we just need to get battle ready before the next. Well, then again, we are already battle ready. We still have a mech bay full of mechs that are. Can you talk? Why are you red? Stop spinning. And show me what's wrong. Where does it hurt? Zero days, zero cost. Okay. Logged and 
Hunchback actually... So three days on the Wolfhound, two days on the Cicada, one day on the Firestarter, or we could do it this way. So we can actually repair one day's worth of armor on the Hunchback. And we'll still be good for the next mission. Alright. One day is all we need. Beautiful. You right. T full. I'll get it in the schedule. Alright, bump you up to there. Alright. Three more days till the next contract. And I just I checked the uh, timer. We have enough time for another. Watch it be a target acquisition. Oh. Wait. Clan Barak takes control. Clan Diamond Shark withdraws their forces in haste, your contract ending with their defeat. We were working for Barak, right? Or were we against Barak? We were against Barak. Really? But we won every single mission we dropped on. Huh. Oh well, you know what? We got a lot of good stuff over the course of those missions. So... Crap. Seven days. Two, three, four, five, six. I'll scout five days. So, yeah, everything should be ready in six days. Except for the crab. There we go. Let's drop on one more mission, because as I was saying, I checked the recording timer. We have enough time for one more quick mission. That's not a quick mission. That's that's not a quick mission at all. Plus a one skull, we'd be dropping a half-star lance. That would be like two mechs. Um... Yeah, this is this is a pretty low low skull planet. I mostly did it to test the mission variation, and seeing that it is just standard like whatever whatever difficulty you can get on that planet is the difficulty of the contracts. So yeah, definitely three and a half to four skull at most. That way we end up potentially getting you know, oh no, actually four and a half skull would be dangerous because we could potentially get five skull missions. Actually, you know, I think. I think we could consistently handle the five skull missions with what we've got now. <sighs> I mean, honestly, an assassinate might be quick. So let's do six twenty five. Six twenty five, assassinate. <laughs> All the red. Alright, right, right, right. Okay. So, that's right. The Wolfhound and Firestarter just had engine crits. Engine crits. Let's take one day. Go ahead and get those started so I don't forget. I'll let you know when that's done. Yeah. But again, didn't lose anything. That's the important part. Got close, but did not. Logged and noted. And actually, I just realized she resisted the Lamia resisted the injury from the knockdown. Nice. Love to see it. So we can actually drop her in the other wolfhound now. Take advantage of her mastery. Yeah, this Oz Scout. I am definitely gonna repair it. Ah, I actually cannot confirm without dropping... You know what, I'll drop Heavy Pharaoh back in. We have two. And Heavy Pharaoh becomes less useful once you get to medium and higher. Because they're just, you know, you need more slots for weapons and things. But yeah, I'll just do that for now. I'll come back to it later. Right. Alright. Get it in the schedule. Cool. Now then, as I was saying, we are going to drop on this six salvage priority pick mission against Clan Burak. 
don't worry, we're going to shift away from fighting the clanners for a little while, but uh, I'm specifically going to look for... Here we go. Uh, Wolfhound. Boom. Actually, shift you over a little bit. Because I also definitely want to bring our Hunchback. Oh. Phoenix Hawk? Yeah, Phoenix Hawk. Oh, Bear Claw's injured. Uh... Do we have somebody who's reckless, actually? Yes, we do. Reckless only has fours, but is reckless. So, maybe we'll actually be able to hit for once. Then again, Sin is 5444, has focus fire for the reduced recoil, and also, more importantly, is lucky. So the rotary rifle is less likely to jam. So yeah, we'll drop her there. Uh, Jester, your fire starter is damaged. Actually, can we drop? No, we can't. We can't even drop the locust. Okay, that's our team then. Bushwhacker, John Rambo, Cicada, and Wolfhound. Let's go. Alright, here we go. Hopefully our third quick mission. Assassination against the clanners again. Command interface and then initiated. after this, um, I'll call it an episode, and next episode, we will travel... Is that a catapult? Kind of looks like a catapult. Um, next episode, we're going to travel. Oh wow, it looks like he's isolated. Nice. Where's this... Where's the supporting forces? Way over here. Alright then. Hmm. This is actually an interesting decision. Either we drop and deal with the primary target and then have to run all the way across the map to deal with the supporting lance which might have long-range weapons firing at us the whole time. Or we drop and deal with the supporting lance, and then run all the way across the map at the target, who, again, I think was like an LRM boat. But it would just be one mech shooting long-range stuff at us instead of a full lance. And honestly, based on the area we can't deploy in, I think there's also going to be reinforcements on this side as well. So having eight mechs shooting at us from long range versus just having one mech shooting at us from long range, I think it's wiser. Because let's let's be honest, there's clan tech on the board. I'm I'm very unlikely to just e back out of this. But then again, on the other hand. It would be nice to have that option if things start going sideways. Yeah, I'm going to deal with the primary target first. Again, just to have that option. Now, again, if we're getting pelted with long-range stuff the entire time we're closing with the reinforcements, gonna have a bad time. Okay, it's not a catapult. It might not actually have any long range at all. It's a vanguard. Awaiting orders. Well then. Does he still have spawn protection? It's round three, so I think that means no spawn protection. Let's find out. Worst case scenario, we eat up US ping. Yeah, he has no evasion, actually. Clan ER PPC, pair of Clan LB5s, and a bunch of SRM4 streets. Primary target damage, Commander. Oh, right, it's this Wolfhound. <laughs> I was like, where's the peep? Waiting for orders. Right, 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 this Wolfhound. This Wolfhound doesn't have a PPC. Wait a second. That wolfhound is more okay. Never mind. It, it, we just we just had to get there. Uh, yeah. Fucking 
For a second I was confused because I thought it, the Wolfhound had higher accuracy than our Cicada. I'm on the clock. What which would have been very strange indeed. All right. Let's make some bad decisions. In Actually, we speed. should have checked. <sighs> do I acid or do I heat? That ERPPC. He's probably not going to fire it if he's hot. So let's try to heat him up a little bit. Even though he's going to have clan double heat sinks. And it looks like we didn't do much at all. Streaks did not get a lot. Now who's dumb for having all the art? Stealth is so nice. <laughs> Alright. Alright. I don't know why I'm surprised at this point. Like... I don't understand. I really don't. All of our other mechs are so much more accurate. And I don't understand why. Yeah, he's nowhere close to open, so... We're not going to go all in with the rotary rifle yet. I mean, they're not shooting at us from extreme range. So that means, at the very least, there's no like arrows. All right, let's get down. Because arrows, you can basically shoot across the entire map without issue. One adjustment coming right up. Okay, there's some heat. Nice. Yeah. So just just some missiles, just the uh, auto cannons. I mean, he is sinking all of the heat, but if we keep him from firing... Oh, right. We want to be longer range. Uh, but we can't really get longer range away from him. God, our hit chance is so awful. <laughs> On my way. Double time. Our hit chance is so awful. So bad. Engaging. Um. But yeah. I mean, if we're if we're pumping our infernos into him and all it's doing is preventing him from firing the uh, PPC, that's fine. Roger that. Okay, yeah, Wolfhound. Those are very respectable hit chances. Unfortunately, they're not doing a lot of damage. Although that's a head hit. I'll take a head hit. Ready for orders. Um. Well, you have really positioned yourself in a spot that bothers me. Okay. On my way. Double time. I mean, I don't really have much choice. He is against the border of the map, so... If I want to consistently shoot him from the same side... To open him up and start critting him out... Then I kind of have to stack up. All right. Yes, Commander. Can we shoot and move? I don't think we can. No, I don't. I don't think we can. We do not have that option. <sighs> I mean, sure. Copy that. Two evasion. Go ahead and go all in this time because. Oh no, we're shooting him from the other side. Never mind. I mean, he's unsteady. So we should be able to get a very solid hit with our Wolfhound as well as with our Bushwhacker if necessary. Okay, he's panicked. Unfortunately, we're... Flanking. There's that long range I was worried about. 30, okay. I'm on the clock. What do you want? 
So somebody, somebody somewhere has a pair of LRM-15 clans. Again, even if all the Inferno does is prevent him from firing the PPC, that's enough. Yeah, beautiful. What do you need? I mean, he is panicked. Get into his back. Maybe he'll punch out. Nope. Playing with my food. I'm on the clock. What do you want? All right. Let's get down to it. Yeah. We just need to finish him. There we go. All right. Now then, we see a Stormcrow. Ooh, nice. Uh, so if I go up this path, I will have high ground on them. But in order to maneuver, I'll have to go all the way around this way and go down. However, if I go this way, I have to go through water. So I think going up, going up and around is preferable. So move, brace. Hopefully they shoot a John Rambo with his 40% damage reduction. Standing by. Wolfhound also move and brace. On my way. Only moving for two, but also with 40% damage reduction. I mean, the 45 tonner doesn't have that much more armor than the 35 tonner. Uh, definitely gonna sprint with our cicada. Get seven evasion Roger instead that. of five, as well as cover. Shadowhawk 2C. Nice. And yeah, our evac zone is on the other side of them, so... So if things go badly, we can just scoot to the exit with the cicada if everyone else starts going down. Because I'm pretty sure the cicada would be the last one to go down, given the 7 evasion. Yeah, I'm going to continue just moving and bracing until I get close enough to actually start shooting. And as long as they're firing indirectly, their accuracy should be quite low. And they'll only be doing 2 damage per missile. And at 2 damage per missile, they'll actually probably run out of ammo before they kill us. Yes, Commander. Good to go. Plus we have AMS. With 13 shots left, okay. Switch to caseless. Good to go. Switch into caseless. All right, I'm actually gonna move for six, so I can brace and cover. <clears throat> okay, so they have line of sight now. They're firing at very long range, so what do you want? probably an AC two, if I had to guess. Um, Bushwhacker just needs to sprint. But it also has a medic stealth, so there's a chance they won't even be able to target him. Yeah. The medic stealth, three evasion, really solid ECM. Which reminds me, actually. Um. What do you want? You? Oh, I have to do it on their turn. Standing by. Oof. All right. Yeah, Wolfhound, we could move down here and actually get a shot. But it would probably just be with the large lasers. That being said, that's a lot of damage. And a really bad hit chance. And we don't really have anything else that could follow up, so no, I think... I think I'm going to intentionally avoid... Go three evasion. I'm gonna go ahead and vigilance with the wolfhound. Done. I'm on the clock. Lucky again, largely relying on his Let's stealth. Bad 
decisions at high speed. Then again, I could also go vision. No, no. He's got more armor. He's a 55 tonner. Commander. Sin is able to get four evasion and cover. I'm fine with that. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to save resolve so that I specifically have inspired. Roger. That way I get the plus one accuracy whenever I'm shooting at them. I mean, I have high ground, so they have an accuracy penalty shooting up at us. Yeah, as long as they're firing at the bushwhacker, I'm completely content. They're, they have a very low chance of hitting because of the stealth and everything. We forgot to switch the angel, he seems back to passive. Okay. I really... I really wish the modders never made it so that the Angel ECMs start off active. It doesn't make any sense. It's only... like, active is only good when you're right in front of and right in, in amongst the enemies. So it's very awkward. I'm gonna actually move Embrace here. I'd rather have the 40% damage reduction than the extra evasion. Especially since I don't think they have line of sight to me. But yeah, it's very strange that the Angel ECM starts pass or starts active. Especially since it's like the only ECM that does. Hmm. It's weird. I mean, actually, I'm not playing on the online map right now, so there's nothing stopping me from going and tweaking it myself. I just have to find where. And that might take a while. Order. Okay. Move for two. I want to be central since I have the AMS. Set that to passive. Okay. On the bright side, it seems that there's only one... On the bright side, it seems like there's only one star of enemies. I'm on the clock. What do you want? Okay. Sprint into Let's cover. Make some bad decisions at high speed. Almost done repositioning. Receiving you. Yeah, that passive. All right. Can only get obstructed line of sight to them. I think I'm going to go intercept the Sentinel with my Cicada. I think that's a better use for it. Ah, I can see why people enjoy this line of work. Why is it hot? Wait. The Sentinel is like almost overheating. How? Okay. Systems holding. Commander. I can get unobstructed line of sight, but I would have to completely leave cover. I could fire from cover with obstructed line of sight. Yeah, I think, for now, limiting return fire is ideal. Engaging target. Nice hit. 57 damage. Beautiful. And here comes the Shadowhawk. Yep. Eight evasion? Sounds good to me. Let's move. Sorry. Hi there. I don't know why he's running hot. What do you want? But I'm happy to see it. 
let's make some bad decisions at high speed. Anything that reduces the volume of fire at our cicada is wonderful. I don't know if I can actually get down that way, but I know I can shoot at them from there. Our highest hit chance is on the Sentinel, but the Phoenix Hawk is standing right next to the Storm Crow. On the move, full speed. So I think I'm gonna vigilance, losing the uh, in inspired bonus to hit, but. Yeah, we got one stray shot. So, this this gives them two targets. They might shoot at the eight evasion cicada or at the three evasion cover, I mean guarded. Yeah, Phoenix Hawk. Really need to get my bushwhacker up front so that they, you know, shoot at him as well. Yes, Commander. Yeah, I cannot get down this way. All right, noted. Oh, those hit chances. Those hit chances. I can't pass those up. And the ultralight rotary rifle jammed, even though it only was only firing times two. All right then. I'm even gonna vigilance again. Locking on. Okay, destroyed the arm, but it was only a small pulse laser. Scored a critical hit. That could have been a lot more impactful. Eh, damage is damage. Alright. Oh, you know what might have happened? So sometimes the enemy mechs will start damaged. The Sentinel might have started with engine crits. Because when your engine takes one crit, I think you generate an extra 30 heat per round. And if you take two... No, it's 15 heat per round if you take one crit. But if you take two crits, I think it's 30 heat per round. Or something like that. So he might be overheating just because his engine's already crit. Which means if we get an engine crit before we blow anything off, we might be in good shape. Oh, yeah. Let's make some bad oh, decisions yeah. At high speed. That is a hit chance and a half. But honestly, the Storm Crow is the much bigger threat. Never mind, he's missing half his weapons. That Storm Crow I can't actually shoot at. Dual ER larges, dual LRM-15s, dual ER mediums. He is definitely the biggest threat. I could also shoot the Phoenix Hog, but not nearly as good of a hit chance. Uh, he's out of... Actually, is he out of range of dead fire? Yeah. I mean, I don't see any vehicles. So we might as well try for some through armor crits. One attitude adjustment coming right up. That's why tandem is good. I'm legally obligated to through armor to ammo kill. explosion. Beautiful. Yes, Commander. That's one way to wreck them. That is one way to wreck them. <sighs> Unfortunately, not going to be able to get a great hit chance the with way. the Wolfhound. But... Then again, actually... If I EWS ping, it will not hit the... Sh the uh, the, 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 the Storm Crow. So no, I don't want to EWS ping. The Storm Crow is the priority target, but whenever I have more than double the hit chance, I'm kind of obligated to take it, right? Giving him everything I've got. Standing by. Okay, I am running across rough terrain. Acknowledged. And I am getting right up in their happy little faces. I'm even in a vigilance, so I have higher initiative next round. Good. 
Sentinel. Still hot for whatever reason. Still doing nothing for whatever reason. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I respect your 55 damage. Consider yourself respected. Commander. You are going to loop around that way. Understood. And you're going to shoot yeah. the Stormcrow. And also get your C3 on point. Acknowledged. And also give them a target that has cover and seven evasion. Order. Meanwhile, oh yeah, that's a hit chance. Affirmative. I will absolutely take that hit chance. Yeah, yeah. When the hit chance is that good, you don't say no. <laughs> We're down to 40 shots of caseless and 13 shots of standard. Well then. Firing on target. All right. Twenty-two damage from the Phoenix Hawk. All right. Really curious what the Storm Crow is going to do. Is he going to take the bait and shoot at the Cicada, or is he going to shoot at one of our slower mechs? Shooting at the Wolfhound, but only hitting with two missiles. I am completely happy with that. Oh, we actually can't get down here, huh? I see. Well, in that case... I mean, honestly, I'm kind of tempted to just focus fire the mechs with the highest hit chance. But the Stormcrow is so much bigger of a threat than the others. And I miss everything. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I'm on the clock. What do you want? That being said, we now have Lucky. And Lucky. Lucky has a decent hit chance. And only 12 Inferno missiles. Okay. So my thought was that I was going to destroy the Stormcrow by overheating him first. But no, we'll just go with tandem and try for another ammo explosion. LRM ammo. Cool. So, what other LRM ammo does he have, if any? He does have more, otherwise the missiles would be red. Okay. Phoenix Hawk, still shooting. Seems to be getting pretty toasty. Shadowhawk is pushing. Four damage on the Wolfhound. I will take it. I'm not feeling very threatened at the moment, but that could very easily change if the uh, Clan ER Larges start hitting. That's uh, 55 damage pinpoint, if I remember correctly. Ow. Only did 49 damage for some reason. Losing armor. I didn't think we had damage reduction in the Wolfhound. Oh, Wolfhound side torso is about to pop, and that's the side that has all the laser insulators. Ha <laughs> ha! That's not good. Um. Yeah, can I, uh. Can I shoot him in the side? The. No? I can't shoot Stormcrow in the side? I have to shoot him in the back if I want to shoot him? How about the Shadowhawk? Can I shoot the Shadowhawk in the side that's already damaged? Yes. Yes, I can. Alright. That's better than shooting the Stormcrow in the back whenever I'm about to aim at him with everyone else. From the front. Okay. Yes, Commander. Honestly, I... I'm almost tempted to just stand and shoot this. And 
Nah. What if I go back? 26, 23. High ground? Just move and shoot? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea why my accuracy is always so awful. I'm just gonna go with the Phoenix Hawk then. Alright. That's going to hurt. I'm on the clock. What do you want? This, on the other hand, is completely Stormcrow. 100% straight to the Stormcrow. Okay, we have six tandem missiles. We have 12 Inferno missiles. And we can fire dead fire. We can also fire acid. Acid makes the most sense. But we will hit with the tandem first. There's a chance we get an ammo explosion that blows up a component, and then that component will no longer be, you know, there to soak hits. One attitude adjustment coming right up. Alright. The SRM is in. Aye, aye. So I need my right side not towards the enemy. Which means I move right up here like this and present my left. And then just for good measure, I was going to say go Vigilance, but I can't. So, here we go. Roger that. Well, his leg's open. I guess that's something. That Sentinel's still overheating and doing nothing. I'm really surprised he hasn't shut down yet. Because he's been over the red line every single turn. Since I saw him. It's very strange. Stormcrow doing nothing. Commander. Um, hmm. Standing by. I mean, again, keeping left side towards enemies, again, going vigilance. But this time, I guess I'll shoot the Shadowhawk. Sure. Looks like I crit his gyro based on how much stability damage he just got out of nowhere. All right, shooting at my seven evasion cicada. I'm on the clock. I'm going to take this shot at the Phoenix right. Hawk. Let's get down to it. Because I'm worried I'm not going to be able to fire my dead fire at anyone else. And I'm running out of other types of ammo. One attitude adjustment coming right up. I should have put the lasers first again. Well, I need order. Uh, yeah. Also Phoenix Hawk. I need the Stormcrow to turn back around before I can start shooting him again. Copy that. All right, there's a Phoenix Hawk down. Enemy down. Commander. Garrison, on the other hand, can shoot the Phoenix Hawk from the, or the Stormcrow from the front. Location confirmed. Six evasion cover and firing. Okay, not quite a leg destruction. Inflicted some heavy damage. I mean, all it takes is the large lasers hitting and the LRMs critting, and we can have a very bad time very quickly. Yes, Commander. All right, taking another shot at Stormcrow. Moving to position. Again with awful hit chance. Or I could shoot the Shadowhawk. But the Shadowhawk is already opened from the other side. 
So yeah, we're shooting the storm girl. And actually getting some good hits. Nice. Alright, Shadowhawk is coming closer. Cool. As I said, you know, if, if we don't have a shot on the Storm Crow, then being close enough to use Dead Fire on is very helpful. Just because of our ammo balance. But we did get that SRM6 clan, so we can. We can do the thing I was talking about with the Bushwhacker, where we put the SRM6 clan instead of the regular the SRM6. Orders. Uh, Garrison is going to shoot the Stormcrow from. Never mind. Shoot the Shadowhawk from the damaged side. Or. Yeah, there we go. So this is potentially a kill. And I know I was just saying how Shadowhawk is close enough for uh, Deadfire, blah blah blah, but it's, it's fine. I can't get unobstructed to the Stormcrow. How unfortunate. Alright, well, Shadowhawk it is. Maybe a kill. Not a kill. That's fine. He's he's unsteady, so that's that's fine. I can do exactly what I was saying. Because once again, we can only get obstructed line of sight to the Stormcrow. And doing reduced damage is not cool. Let's make some bad decisions at high speed. Alright, Shadowhawk. Time to die. One attitude adjustment coming right. Not a kill. Well, I don't need to... I'm getting sick of saying that. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Alright. I'm on the clock. What do you want? So dude guy there is still shut down. Ready for orders. Garrison is going to I don't want the Stormcrow to get into his back. That's that's the reason I'm gonna do this. Got Move it. for seven, shoot him in the side. Yeah, I don't want him going the back of the cicada with the clan ER larges and LRM 15s. Ow. Okay, that could have been much worse. Light damage, Commander. I'm on the clock. What do you want? And I think I, I think I actually just stand and shoot this for absolute maximum hit chance. One attitude adjustment. Not a legging. Well, Awaiting orders. I was really expecting the leg to go down. Firing all weapons. Yeah, there's not gonna be much left of the storm crow. Scored a critical hit. There we go. He punched out. Yes, now then. Moving out. The shutdown sentinel. Target confirmed. UAC-5 ammo destroyed, but he's just running an Inner Spirit uh, UAC-5, so I'm not actually all that concerned about it. I'm going to save the ammo, because ammo does cost money. I think also heat sinking from like laser fire also costs sea bills. Target locked. But I think it's cheaper than specialist SRM ammo. Mission successful. All right, what a way to close out the week! Three missions against Clanners, and they were all quick missions. Love to see it. Phoenix Hawk One C, four parts.
We already have a Phoenix Hawk part. We could have ourselves a Clan Phoenix Hawk. Sentinel, there's two parts, we already have one. Shadowhawk 2C, no parts. Stormcrow, one part, but there's only three. Sun Spider's heavy. Or, we could just take Clan Equipment. And nah. I think I'd pass on the Clan LB5. Clan XL Engine, Clan Exchanger. Glazed. So Glazed is interesting because it's reduced armor weight, but it also reduces energy damage. Although it does increase the ballistic and missile damage you take. But if you have plenty of AMS, then it's just ballistic that does 15% extra damage and energy that does 30% less. Clan Heat Bank. I mean, that's just minus 7 heat per turn and then resistance to heat damage. I'm not going to priority pick it. Ooh, IFF Jammer, but it's only an IFF Jammer Mark 1. Again, not going to priority pick it. No, no, no. Sensor Recon is the one that does not stack with Electronic Warfare. Sensor Sniper is the one that does. Sensor Sniper is the amazing sensor. Um, that's a slick sweep. That, that's a slick sweep. And just like that, our decisions are made. Very, very easy. Although the Sensor Recon is really good for any mech that's like, just like the Locust, for example, that you don't really want to put a lot of Electronic Warfare stuff on that doesn't have the tonnage for it. But again, this is clan tech that I'd rather have. Yeah. The LRM-15, the ERPPC, the clan ER Large, those are all amazing weapon systems. Amazing weapon systems. And then Clan XL Engine and Clan Exchanger and Slick Sweet, they're all just no brain picks. Easy peasy. We get two parts of the Phoenix Hawk, two parts of Sentinel, we get the Shadowhawk part, we get all three parts of the Stormcrow. We even get two parts of the Sun Spider, even though we're about to go immediately scrap them. We even get the Clan LB5. Nice. Uh, standard machine gun, you can go. Basic cockpit, you can go. Uh, we have two Inner Spear Endo, and we have two Clan. Now we have three Clan, so we'll drop the Inner Spear Endo. We got the Clan Heat Bank. Again, happy to see it. Clan Sensors, again, better than nothing. And, yeah, two bins of LRM. We only have six. Okay, we'll keep those two. Alright, 29000 is the repair cost. Not a big deal at all. Did we already check the store? No, we did not. New weapon systems. Immediately picking up the Clan LRM-15. Immediately picking up the Clan Enhanced Imaging. New equipment available. And Clan Planets. Double bin of Goss ammo is enough to run two Goss rifles New on its own. Available. Okay. So there goes all of our money, but it's fine. We got really good stuff for it. Heading on over to storage. Storage, storage, storage. Uh, first off, heavy. Goodbye. That's 737,000. Uh, vehicles. Any vehicles. Bandit. That's money. Uh, chameleon, hunchback. Do, do, do. Any. Zephyr. Goodbye. Yeah, we're already good for the next financial report. Any vehicles down here? I will actually build and run the Corona if I get more parts to it. If I get all five parts I need, I will run that thing. Those things were so frustrating to deal with. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are all mechs. I can't think of a vehicle... Like, we haven't faced a light vehicle and gotten parts from one in a while. But, we're good for the financial report. We have a lot of stuff to put into our mechs. So, Hello, Commander. Good to, to end this episode, I'm going to pick a planet to travel to. And we learned that it doesn't matter. Like, your the conflict is going to end whether or not you want all the missions. And if you start off on the side that has less forces, then you're, you know... 
you're more likely to lose. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to travel to this two and a half skull planet, which means the missions will be between one and a half skulls and three and a half skulls. And we're going to fight for the Lyrans against Clan Wolf. Then, after we're done there, we're going to try to find a conflict somewhere between Inner Spear Houses and go and try to get more mech chassis. So I'm going to go ahead and click set course and then pause and the wolfhound before I forget. We're going to do a lot of building to start next episode and then jump into conflict. But before I forget, this is the medium clan laser. Yeah, this is the one with the laser insulators. So I want to drop the inner sphere large laser, which is four tons. Uh, we're not going to have slots. Mm, we're not going to have the slots for it. Because we picked up this clan ER large laser. Uh, hello? What? Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Autosave worked. Unfortunately, that means that all the mechs that got damaged need to basically be redone with their armor. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so replacing that laser with the clan large ER right there does give us slightly more heat problems. But it frees up a ton that we can't use. Because we don't have slots. Hmm. Unfortunate. I mean, we could drop the large approved heavy for the other clan ER large we have. That's 110 damage instead of 120 at longer range. And it's also a lot cooler. Which means at that point we don't need to use that extra ton for cooling. So we could use it for another battle computer. Like a battle computer tracking make this thing even more accurate. And were we able to have maxed armor? Uh, I think we had leg armor maxed. I think we had side torso armor maxed. And we did not have back armor maxed. This is definitely not how we had it. Although now we have a slot free, so if we had patchwork, we could absolutely slip that in. Hmm. Alternatively, we could use the extra ton just for armor. Or... Oh, Clan Indo would have to go first. And then Clan Pharaoh. Put that large improved heavy back. Take off the tracking, add another heat sink. And then armor up for 0.4 tons. What would our heat look like then? <laughs> Only overcooling by two, stealth would be more than that. Hmm. I think I actually like the idea of ten less damage split more evenly between the weapons. And... 
and the battle computer tracking. That makes this thing a pinpoint monster. But honestly, evasion ignore isn't something that it really does well. It's better on slower moving targets. Oh, we don't have optics. There we go. Boom. Now we have night vision, heat vision, and advanced zoom. There we go. So now we're much, much better on nighttime missions. And we're more accurate on everything else. And the plus one accuracy from advanced zoom is half of what we would have gotten from the tracking valve computer anyway. Cool. And then yeah, armoring up the back. Still not able to max armor. So I would absolutely love some patchwork. Or a gyro upgrade. But we can't put the XL in because we have the two slots, and we're not going to put the ultralight because of the stability threshold issues. Yeah, I think this is fine though. Although, actually, I think I'm going to max the back armor on the center and the side that really matters. So, our shield sight is not fully armored, but if we lose it, Okay. I think we made this better. Again, our heat efficiency is the main reason why the change is good. So now with the 6% Stealth X heat, it's going to be an extra roughly 4 heat, maybe 5. And then the 6 flat means we're going to have a small heat delta, but literally all we have to do is like not fire the medium laser clan once to drop the heat for several rounds. I think this is a better build. I think that's better. All right, cool. And then the rest we'll do next round or next episode because, oh, right, store, store, because we bought some stuff and I want that stuff. New weapon systems that. available. We bought that. And we bought that. New equipment okay. available. And then, jeez, okay. Need to go scrap the stuff. Heavy, scrap it. Yep. Uh, medium, we had some vehicle parts. Zephyr was 140,000. Uh, Bandit was 100 something thousand, 160,000. And we're good. Yeah. And then, obviously, navigation. Going to two and a half. Travel, set course, pause. And we're not working on anything on the Argo. Okay, we actually arrived same day as the finance report. So we're not going to have the money to like swap out engines unless we scrap stuff. And actually, travel costs, jump jump costs, we do need to scrap some more stuff. Um, 20 tonners, goodbye. 25 tonners, goodbye, even though raptors are really good. And I like mongooses. And again, the clan mechs could get clan tech out of it. But I think I would rather be able to build And yeah, I'm not joking. I am keeping the corona part around because I will build that thing and I will run it. All right. When now we should be good travel and building costs. But that will be next time. So, look forward to that next week. For now, that has been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.